who buys land knows it's typically not that easy to buy something so fast, but I'm very happy for the narrative to be. Tim Pool spends a million dollars to buy land out from under woke leftists who wouldn't let him skate. So, yes, it's true that it does take time to make a, a purchase of land. So what's the implication here? That this was in the works well before they even kicked you out of the event? That you had planned to, yes, I want to be a part of this. I want to be a part of the scene. I'm going to give them a whole bunch of money. And I'm also just going to buy the property that this whole skate park takes place on top of. The other reasons, unrelated to this. It took a while to set up. Yeah. Well, then it turns out they don't want my money or me to even be part of the skate park. That sucks. Looks like you woke lefties got destroyed by capitalism. I wasn't part of skater culture, okay? It's not that I don't want to. I, I just, uh, I, I don't have a lot of skills on board. But I could, I, I suppose. I, I, I can do, sur I, I snowboard. I'm, I'm decent at snowboarding. I, I can surf. You know, I can get up. Uh, so I, I think I could skateboard. But I'm not part of a skater store, a skater boy, you know, culture. So I can't say that I'm directly involved and pissed off from the perspective of someone who's in the group and it's like this person is a foe or a fake skater. I have listened to the phone calls that someone called into the majority report we talk about how Tim Pool is specifically the kind of uh, skater figure that a lot of skaters hate. Um, what do they call him? A rocket boy? Uh, someone who like doesn't really try to get great skills in one thing, but instead just like is like, hey, look at my bikes and, and look at my toys and look at my ramps and look at all that kind of stuff. Uh, when it turns out that like you know the the culture is a, a lot more than that. A level that I a hundred percent respect. This is what happens when you have like, um, have, you know, uh, a, a level of income that you can kind of do as you see fit. This is basically a mini Elon buying Twitter scenario. And it's one of the most petty, hilarious slash awesome things that I've ever been able to report on. I don't know if Tim has addressed this yet, but I think it's absolutely hilarious. So we start with. First of all, what is he standing? Well, not only is he standing, he's taking time out of his busy schedule defending Dr. Disrespect, which he's still doing, by the way. I'm so sick of talking about this Dr. Disrespect and all these weird fucking right wing weirdos who are wanting to defend groomers. The same people who just spend all day calling LGBTQ plus people groomers and pedos and all that kind of stuff. And turns out Dr. Disrespect is their hero, so he can do no wrong. He's still to this day putting out videos about Dr. Disrespect and being like, I just want to see the logs. Uh, just show me the logs, okay? If he's just uh, apparently it's as bad as everyone thinks it is. I just want to say, show us the logs. Like, why do you need to see the sexting between uh, a fucking PDF file and a kid? Why do you want to look at that? You have multiple sources at this point confirming that it was so bad that it was worth not only dropping it from the company, but in addition to that, that he knew that they were a minor, that he continued even though they he knew that they were a minor, and that they were sexually explicit in nature. That's more than enough, I would assume, for anybody who is rightfully disgusted by that whole thing. A DIY. Skaters will talk about a DIY. Essentially, they'll trespass on property that they don't own and build a skate park. Do I have a problem with it? No, I do not. I don't have a problem with it, especially when it's like... I doubt that. I don't believe that for a second. Okay, yeah. How do you do, fellow kids? Fucking cool ass the quartering coming along here. Like, it's totally fine if you go onto, like, private property and build a skate park. I'm totally down with that. You know what? Yeah, break the rules. Yeah, destroy the system. Rage against the machine, comrades. City-owned land or abandoned house or whatever. As long as, these, as long as they're not, like, you know, hurting themselves and suing somebody over it, I don't care. Okay, so DIYs have been around forever. Sometimes landowners, people who own the land will say, you know, you know, little local skate group will go to them and say, Hey, uh, can we build a little skate park on your, on your property? We promise not to sue you or this kind of thing or the other thing. Cause obviously liability is a thing. Um, you know, when I was younger, 16, 17, there was a farmer that had, uh, storage units and he would let bands practice the far and it goes away. But it, you know, in, from the spirit of things, I don't have a problem with DIY skate parks. Now, if we go back to uh, August 21st, this is a, this is a one year long revenge story. August 21st, 2020. Okay. So I just wanted the introduction cause I'm going to get into the actual story itself. You don't need to listen to, you know, this transphobic wizard explain, uh, the deets, but we can go through it. So we'll start here. Tim Poole bought the land a DIY was built on after the locals denied his money for a skate event. They didn't want Tim Poole to be a part of. 
So, on August 21st, 2023, Tim Poole, prominent right-wing podcaster, inserted himself into the 10th anniversary skateboard event at a contest at the Mar um, Martinsburg DIY Skate Park. The idea of committing a total of $20,000 prize money for the first, second, and third place winners. This self-insertion was without guidance or knowledge of the local skateboarders who led the DIY spot. To avoid possible negative attention that would have been associated with Tim Poole, the money was used and Tim Poole was barred from attending the event by local skaters. Huge blow to Tim. That's got to suck. Because again, this is like one of your side projects, right? Like obviously he's first and foremost Tim Cast, you know, the uh, centrist, milquetoast neoliberal who only invites really far right individuals on to talk on a repeated basis, rotating carousel of Nazis kind of a guy. They didn't want to be associated with that. But his passion lies in wanting to be a screamo band. There's that side project. And also to be a skater boy. Those are his, his like, you know, his, his side passions. He doesn't want to only be known for one thing. And that I, I get that. All of us are the same way, you know, like I, I like cartooning, I like making art, I like editing videos, I like making documentaries, I eventually maybe want to make movies or something like that. It's one of those things where like, yeah, of course, uh, there's there's side side stuff that you want to work on. But then to be shut down because people know who the fuck you are, that's got to hurt, right? Especially when you offer that much cash, like that's a lot of money for a DIY skate park uh, competition. I've got one, there's a, not a DIY, there's a city built uh, Vancouver skate park uh, very, very close to me that throws events all the time. And they seem like an awesome, like, you know, spot for the local community and for youth to, again, gather. Uh, they, they host uh, skating events. Uh, they are apparently very, very inclusive uh, to a variety of different people and groups. The skater community is, you know, historically very, you know, it's, it's very uh, intertwined with uh, certain forms of music that is also very anti-authoritarian, that very inclusive, uh, you know, to fight oppression, that kind of stuff. So you could say that the culture itself leans a little bit further to the left, as as do like the bands and the kind of stuff that they they listen to and then they propagate. Um, and it makes perfect sense to me why they might want to be like, fuck that noise. No. Like, yeah, $20,000 would be awesome. Obviously, first place, what, like 10,000, second, 5,000, and then third and second, whatever, like a couple thousand. Like, that, that, that sounds great. And it would be really, really cool. But it's not worth it. It's not worth it to have this become Tim Pool Presents our event, right? Which is what he tried to do. So, I'm committing $20,000 towards prizes at this local DIY skate jam best trick contest. 12K first place, 6K second place, 2K third place. Richie Jackson will assist in judging. I've done nothing to organize this and have no idea how it will even be possible. Gonna be fun. Just coming out of, the, out of the gates and be like, I'm throwing money at this, gonna be there, gonna be a part of it. Uh, I haven't contacted them and let them know that I'm officially joining this thing, but it's a thing. The Martinsburg DIY Skate Park was uh, an unofficial skating spot, so the property owner was unaffiliated with the local skate scene. The head locals of the DIY Skate Park were in contact with the property owner and even had permission to continue to use the land for skating and minor obstacle development. On September 11th, 2023, only 21 days after Tim Pool's tweet announcing his involvement in the event, 310N Railing Street uh, Martinsburg WV, which held the DIY spot, was bought for $850,000 by the Will of the People Production. Will of the People Production is owned solely by Tim Pool. Tim Pool bought the land which resided in the uh, that had the Martinsburg DIY skate park on it, which devastated the Martinsburg skate scene. So, yeah, the story is pretty pretty cut and dry massive asshole move just again fucking spitting in the face of the entire culture that you yourself are trying to bolster be a part of be part of the scene it's like okay i'm gonna throw cash at this twenty thousand dollars and i get to be a part of this one of my dudes is gonna be a judge we're there and they're like we reject the offer we'd like to not be associated with you that's where we leave it suddenly uh a company based on the name of one of his shitty ass songs buys the property and then all of a sudden, the DIY skate park is no more. Yeah. Tim Pool bought the land. A DIY was built on after the locals denied his money for a skate event they didn't want Tim to be a part of. Tim Pool says he will build his own skate park if the DIY skaters in Martinsburg WV don't want him. Then he buys their skate park. You can't buy real people's respect, you fascist. Something tells us the kids are going to be all right. Long story short, local shared the flyer with us, asked if we were going, mentioned the best trick, I said I'd throw down. Organizers posted that I'm not welcome and will be removed if I show up. That's fine. I believe in private property. We are already setting up our skate shop in Martinsburg and buying land for a skate park so I don't need to be involved if they don't want me to be. This has been in the works for a while now. I always prefer to do my own thing. If they got beef, best of luck to them. 
Yeah, I mean, like, there's nothing they can really do at this point. If you're willing to buy the property, the skate park is on. And then on top of that, you know, you uh, you kick them off. Good job. Polstering the future. So Tim Pool defends himself. I'm being accused of spending $850,000 to buy the land under a DIY skate park because they wouldn't let me skate there. <laughs> While the idea of me buying a million dollar plot in three weeks is absurd, I do own it though. I will allow them to believe every bit of it because it's based. Anyone who buys land knows it's typically not that easy to buy something so fast, but I'm very happy for the narrative to be. Tim Pool spends a million dollars to buy land out from under woke leftists who wouldn't let him skate. What a piece of shit. So, yes, it's true that it does take time to make a, a purchase of land. So, what's the implication here? That this was in the works well before they even kicked you out of the event? That you had planned to, yes, I want to be a part of this. I want to be a part of the scene. I'm going to give them a whole bunch of money. And I'm also just going to buy the property that this whole skate park takes place on top of. The other reasons. Unrelated to this. It took a while to set up. Yeah. Well, then it turns out they don't want my money or me to even be part of the skate park. That sucks. Looks like you woke lefties got destroyed by capitalism for wanting to skate and enjoy yourselves. Tim's still at that phase of his life, I think, where he thinks that these people will accept him. I don't know. I went through this with Magic the Gathering, obviously. Uh <laughs> but then you just got kicked out of the league again for harassing cosplayers. Yeah, how about that? Yeah, you know, it's really hard. I thought, like, why are they kicking me out? Why can't I be part of Magic the Gathering? But then I realized they're all woke, and then they woke scolded me. And because they woke scolded me, like, yeah, I don't want to be a part of those wokies anymore. It's all run by commies and Marxists anyway. Um, you know, the leftoids, you know, hated me in the Magic the Gathering community. It was a game I loved and had been playing since the. Wow. I don't, like, I know a lot of you think I pre-watched this. I don't. It's just all so fucking predictable. Of course. I get kicked out for harassing people in that community for being a creep-ass creep and getting my creep-ass creep fans to fucking be assholes. I started feuds with some of the most beloved and respected figures in that community, uh, you know, including people who were trying to tell them multiple times, like, what you're doing is against everything we stand for. We believe in inclusion. We want to foster a community where people uh, feel completely safe and respected. And unfortunately, you don't represent that. And then it's like, well, they went woke. Yeah, now, now the whole thing's woke. Very, the game came out in 1993. Most of these people had a, you know, who had a problem with me weren't even born in 1993. Um, but they rose to power in Wizards of the Coast. I got banned, and I was unwelcome at events. And that's just how it happens. Sometimes you lose. And uh, these dorks will never... You know, that, I'll say this. I will play Magic... For those asking why Jeremy Hambly is permanently banned from Magic the Gathering, here's one reason. Harassment and cyberbullying of a woman cosplayer. His handle was Unsleeved Media before he became the quartering and uh, started selling coffee. Giving you boners. But, you know, since beta white knights are really uncommon, let's see what the Magic the Gathering community... 107 likes, which is a lot for Magic YouTuber or Magic personality. And here we go. Victor Puente cuckled. You know this dude's a cuck. Good thing he got serious. Bone dog. Seriously. Why are people so fucking terrible? Look at this guy. You're terrible. <laughs> Again, it sucks because I feel like the bar is so fucking low. It's so low for assholes like this to produce this kind of content. This early, you know, Jeremy decordering days was just like, well, they're saying that, like, I'm apparently targeting harassment towards, like, cosplayers, but then look at all the cucks that are defending. Like, why, why is it if you are just showing, like, human decency towards women as a man, you're cucked? You're a simp. Why are you simping? Yeah, why, why aren't you harassing women like me? Come on. Now all these people want a white knight. They want to pretend to be saviors because they're hoping one day that they're going to get pussy. I was like, well, I thought that's the way you think. And so you got to put that into everyone else's POV. You got to make everyone feel that way, right? Like everyone else must think like me, right? Because the only reason I would ever, you know, defend a woman or stand up for her is because I want to have sex with her. Otherwise, what's the point? Why do you even talk to a woman if you don't want to have sex with them? I'm just sad. Magic the Gathering. Magic doesn't know what is... And is not an appropriate thing to say to someone you don't know on the internet. Oh, good. Yeah, good white knighting there. 
Ew, 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 gross. Okay, a girl can say that. That's fine. Girls can be grossed by boners if they don't like boners. Here we go. Brian, white knighting. Okay. Ferret approved. And by the way, this is another common tactic done by gross creeps, like the quartering, where he'll uh, find old posts of women who are like, please don't sexually harass me. Please don't sexually assault me. Please don't do that. Then they'll find posts of those same people who have made a sexual comment or have dressed in a way that they see feel is like sexually provocative or have like at some point mentioned, I enjoy sex. Well, well is this okay for you to post that you enjoy sex and then I'm not allowed to offer you sex and then you can refuse me sex? Is that fair? Kind of seems like why am I sexually harassing someone who also loves sex, right? Doesn't work out. Again, and another then, white knight. And then all the men defending, yeah, you didn't sexually harass women. Oh, white knight, white knight, hey. cuck. Uh, this is awful. Makes me lose faith. I know this dude. I know this fucking dude. He is a ultimate. He's one of the ultimate cucks. Why in the name of all that is holy does he think that's even remotely okay? It's basically the same thing as physical rape, everyone, just so you know. Just so you know. In my experience, it's a huge problem in the MTG community. Again, with this this cuck. This is legit why I'm scared to let my daughter start a video channel. Oh my god. If you raise a daughter that is so triggered by an anonymous YouTube comment or Facebook comment, then you suck ass as a dad. I'm sorry, Justin Ricks. You are a shitty father. Yep, it's up to you to be able to tell women to stay away from men and to grow a spine. Not men stop sexually harassing and assaulting women. Magic the Gathering cosplayer quits over harassment, forcing wizards to speak up. Highlights a much bigger toxicity problem. Wizards of the Coast, the company behind the popular trading game Magic the Gathering, is speaking up about harassment and cyberbullying after a popular cosplayer publicly left the community following months of alleged abuse from a YouTuber and his subscribers. On November 24th, cosplayer Christine uh, Sprankle tweeted that she was unloading her Magic the Gathering costumes and cosplay gear and wakes some months of harassment. Sprankle, who had been contacted by Wizards of the Coast in the past and is considered one of the most popular cosplayers in the Magic scene, spoke about harassment she received from Jeremy. Hambly, a controversial YouTuber seen as a toxic member of the community by other YouTubers and personalities, posted a degrading video about her and other cosplayers. It's been a rough year, she said, and I've been blocked and not said anything about him because I wanted it to die. Without a doubt, the MTG headquarters and Unsleeved Media has made my life hell. She spent this entire year with his unnecessary videos and tweets about me and other members of Magic. Hambly operates two popular Magic-oriented YouTube accounts, Unsleeved Media, with 153,000 subscribers, and The Quartering, which had 24... Now, this is what, 1.4 million? One of his videos Hamley posted about Sprankle has since been taken down by YouTube for violating the company's policy on harassment and bullying. Tweets from Hamley referred to the now removed video as play set a beta white knights protecting Sprankle from the literal email assault. Uh, play set a beta white knights prevent rape of NTG cosplayer Sprankle. Upon request for a copy of the video that was removed by YouTube, Hamley told Polygon he didn't have a version saved so that he could send it to us as it was a live stream and I don't have a local copy. Hamley said he was appalled, uh, has appealed the strike and expects to win. He told Polygon via Facebook, things have gotten much worse uh, since the harassment began. Deactivated making my profiles private in an effort to let it die down so I can recover. Sprinkle's story caught the attention of prominent personalities in the community, many of whom are YouTubers and Wizards of the Coast itself. The cosplay released an initial statement via the official Magic Twitter account condemning harassment in the community. The company doesn't refer to the specific incident that led to Sprinkle's departure. Instead, Wizards of the Coast acknowledged the issue and said it's working on ways to improve the community and safety of those in it. We're saddened by what happened in the Magic community this weekend, cyberbullying and harassment. Uh, like, it, it, it sucks that both Tim Pool and the quartering, and it's funny the quartering is the one calling out Tim Pool for essentially doing the same thing. They infect these communities, right? Like, as I'm someone who loves video games. I could even call myself a gamer. But some people, if you heard yourself saying, like, oh, yeah, I love video games, it's like, oh, so what? Are, are you part of a community that hates women? Are you a misogynist? Are you racist? That there, There's this association with, well, if you love video games, a lot of people in that culture are also bad. No, the majority aren't. The majority of people, in fact, half of whom are women, by the way, but the majority of people who play video games are not racist, are not sexist, are not assholes. There are people who are very loud, who are racist, who are sexist, who are assholes, who are homophobes, who are transphobes, like the quartering. And he has these channels where all they do is harass people and downplay their own like forms of harassment and get their fans to go after them and harass them more. Oh, look at this cook, white knighting. 
got him up here, so yeah, go tell him what a cuck he is. Look at this other white knight, fucking soy ass, low T cuck here. Yeah, saying that apparently we shouldn't sexually harass women. Uh, he's a cuck. Okay, here's some pictures of the, the cosplayer uh, showing off her tits. As you can tell, cleavage. Uh, did she not want people to think of her sexually? Then why would she dress this way? pretty clear. Here's a tweet that she made saying that, like, you know, blowjobs are fun. Uh, is that not sexual? Does he not enjoy that? Am I not allowed to harass her, even though she said something like that? Does that not compute with you all? What's wrong with that? Like, you ruined these communities. Like, people who go play Magic Gathering should be able to feel safe just going to play the game. Not thinking if they go there, dressed as a certain character, that a weirder like you is going to take a photo of them and then post it showing, like, his own rabid fan base. Hey, here's that, like, cosplayer who's apparently, like, a feminist, a feminazi, go-getter boys, you know, shit like that. No, they, they, sh they should not have to worry about that kind of shit. They should go there and enjoy their time like anyone else. So because you ruin it for everyone, you, Tim Pool with skating, right? Tim Pool. If you love skater, skating, if you love skater culture, if you like people doing DIY skate parks, you should just let them have it. And if, honestly, it's that important to you, give them the funding and the money and take your name off of it. Just walk away. Be like, an anonymous gift of $20,000 is going to let this skate event be so much cooler for the youth than it otherwise would have been. People are really excited. So there's some people who are like, this could be life-changing for me to get that much money and win this competition. And if you cared about it, if you genuinely cared about skating not your image as a supplier of funding for skating, because that's what it is, right? The quartering cares about the quartering's YouTube channels and, and cares about people defending him when he's being an absolute asshole. Tim Pool cares about Tim Pool and the Tim Pool brand being associated with the skate park because he's an actual real skater and everyone should know that. So guess what? When you go to the skate event, uh, it, it's sponsored by me. I put the money into it. Uh, you know, I, I'm the one making this whole thing possible. I'm gonna like, no, we don't want to be associated with you. You platform Nazis. You, all the time. We, we see this. We hate Nazis. Our culture hates Nazis. We're anti-Nazi. You're pro-Nazi. So we're anti-you. That That's how this goes. And then it's like, okay, well, turns out I happen to own the property. So, yeah. Guess uh, y'all better stop trespassing on my property. Because, you know. And by the way, all, all those people, they were just woke lefties and I destroyed them. Just so everyone knows. Same with the quartering. The quartering, he, he was just, he fought wokeness uh, at Magic the Gathering. That, that's what happened. N nothing to do with, like, you know, uh, sexual harassment or anything like that. He was just fighting wokeness. Magic the Gathering with any, anybody. Communist, so, you know, far leftist, I don't care. LGBTQ, none of that matters. In fact, I have played with all these types of people in my life. It's only one side that refuses the other side. Why do you think that is? Epic job, Tim. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you leave a like. Because uh, don't tolerate intolerance. That's, that's essentially it, right? Hey, if you'd like to unlock secret bonus episodes as well as uncensored content, go to patreon.com slash the serves. This show is produced by Anna Loves Riley, Arian McCarthy, Cheryl Alvarez, Comrade Junkie, Doug Caddy, Everything Important, Hagbard Celine, Jimmy Sombrero, Multimondi, Omni, Political Poppy, Preston Kroll, Quiet185, Riley and Anna, Roller Dragon, Cernicus, Stellar Gwynn, Sebastian Demel, Travis McClinton, Trincell, Words Greenwood. With additional support coming from all of these amazing human beings right here.